So this video will show you some techniques for painting and printmaking. As always, please take a look at the handout that is on Canvas, which gives you some written instructions that go along with this video. And also just a note, um, if you are using acrylic paint, I have written instructions on that handout about not washing acrylic paint like globs of it down your sink. Uh, you want to make sure that you wipe out any extra acrylic paint and, and throw it in the garbage. Uh, really try to minimize how much um, paint you wash down the sink. Um, and those of you who uh, maybe don't have paints, um, those in my early childhood class, I recommend if you can get some uh, either temper paints or um, washable kids paints just in a few colors you don't have to spend a ton of money on that um, if again again if that's a hardship just please reach out to me and we can make some arrangements okay so let's get started with some printmaking so again as always the purpose of all of these experiments is really to notice the sensory qualities of materials of the interactions of materials and processes on a surface and then how those different materials and processes can communicate different ideas, different feelings, different stories. Um, so we're really in more of an investigator mode here rather than, you know, really trying to make great fine art. You know, we're really being more like a scientist when we are creating. So the first project that I suggest, and again, you don't have to do all of these projects, right? Depending on what class you're in, you choose one or two of the, the uh, options that I'm giving you. You do not have to do all of these. The first one is called warm and cool color stamping. And in the other video where we went over the color wheel, we talked a little bit about warm and cool colors. And here is an example of kind of applying those notions of warm colors and cool colors next to each other. You know, if you just look at the warm side, you know, what kind of feelings does that convey compared to if we just, you know, see the cool colors, what does that convey? And what I really want you to do is get creative about how you apply your paints. For this one, we used, um, for these swirls, just cut up sponges. This is just stamped on there, but you can, you can turn the uh, sponge. Also, Q-tips are used to make these little dots. Plastic forks are great for making marks also. If you have scraps of cardboard, those are great for creating lines and patterns. Um, some other kind of creative tools that you might have include matchbox cars. You can roll them in paint and then roll across your paper. Combs are also good for creating textures on your paper. And then if you have an old toothbrush, those are always good. Old... Um, I guess you can use this for basting a turkey or putting some, I don't know, melted butter on an apple pie. <laughs> um, these kind of scrubbies, also super fun to paint with. So think about um, painting and stamping using these kind of unconventional items. The only thing that I'm going to be firm about is don't use food items. Um, it's really not ethical and it's not sanitary. Um, you know, you see that a lot where people cut up a potato and print with it. Um, I just think that's unethical to use uh, food as art materials. But check out the handout that's on Canvas for more ideas. Also, if you are in processes and structures, our textbook has a whole chapter on stamping basics and techniques with different 
items. That's pages 162 to 173. So you can check that out. So that's uh, the first um, option that you have. Another option is foam printmaking. And if you are in my processes and structures class, you will have a piece of foam that's a little bit larger than this one that I've cut up. If you are in my early childhood class, you could do this project by using a piece of foam that was used for like for a takeout container. Um, just You can just cut it apart to make it flat. Um, don't use meat foam, you know, if you get ground beef that has germs in it. <laughs> Um, use foam, um, you know, if there is fruit on it or something, that's fine. Just wash it first. So you want to cut a piece of foam. Um, plan on making mistakes with this, so um, maybe have a few pieces at, at the ready. And um, then you'd find an image that you're interested in printing. You can see here's um, a sample of what this print will look like when we're when we're done. Um, so you can find a magazine picture. You can use your own photograph, just print it out. Um, you can draw your own image. Um, this is on, this is one of many different ways to do this project. But then I'm going to tape down the image onto the foam, and I've miraculously done that already here. <laughs> Um, I taped it down, and then when you when you've taped it down, um, you take a dull pencil, not a sharp one, because you don't want to tear your drawing, and you're just going to trace over the whole image, and you can see, as I just showed you, that I've done that already. Just kind of speed things up. So I've traced the whole image, and you can see how, you know, it's it's indented, right? There's some texture to it now. Once you trace over the whole image and you pull it off, you might want to go back in and just make those lines a little bit deeper. And notice that the image here has a number. I'll hold it up maybe, right? 3326. If you were to just trace over that 3326, when you printed it, it would be backwards. And let me show you what I mean here. So this former student tried to write the word love, but when she printed it, this is what happens, right? So however you create an image, when you print it, it's going to be backwards. So you can even see that here, the, um, the boy's head is on this side, but it's on this side in the original. So a simple way to manage that, if you do want to have text or numbers, what I do is take a piece of tracing paper, trace over, unless you know how to write things backwards, which that just makes my brain hurt. Um, you just copy it, right? Or let's say I wanted the word love. I just wrote that down there. Then what I do is I would trace over that backwards. Again, if you could do this, you know, freehand, um, that is awesome. So it's going to look backwards on the plate, but it should because when you print it, then it'll look the right side. Okay, so I've got a deep indent pretty much in, you know, all of those lines. And then I'm going to take my paints this case I have acrylic paint so I'm gonna use you know a tiny bit like that right because you don't want to you don't want to waste first of all but then you know we have the problem of 
um, throwing this stuff out, which we don't want to put down the sink. So you can use a paintbrush. You can use a roller to get the paint on. I'm using a paper plate as my palette. Then I'm getting, going to grab a piece of scrap paper. You can use newspaper. Right, so then I'm going to apply the paint to my plate. See how I'm going kind of back and forth? And it's not globs of paint. Again, you'll probably need to do this a few times because you'll either have too much paint or too little paint. And that's okay. That's what we're here for, right? To experiment. Okay, heads up. If I take my paper and put it right over here, all of this extra paint here is going to come off onto my paper. If you don't care about that, then more power to you. That's, that's awesome. If that will bother you, which it will bother me for the rest of my life, just um, get a clean sheet of paper, clean you know, newspaper or scrap paper. And then I place the paper over it and then kind of firmly but gently, you know, press hard but don't. <laughs> um, you know, this is called burnishing. There's all kinds of fancy tools that you can get to burnish. And then just gently peel it off. Eh, it's not too, not too vibrant. So again, I can just keep going and try to get different colors, get it more saturated. Um, I'd probably use a little bit more paint, but you don't want to use too much because then it can kind of go into um, the places where you have carved. Um, so you'll likely have to make a few, a few variations until you get a version that you like. Um, so if you do have, you know, foam, Try to gather a few pieces because you'll probably not be happy with your first version. There's a link in the handout that's on Canvas with um, detailed instructions to if you want to look at more instructions. Okay, um, a couple of other options I want to show my early childhood students. In our textbook on pages 107, to 115, look, there's a whole section on painting with kids. Information about different types of brushes that you can use, um, easels and surfaces, and then they start giving you lots of ideas for different painting activities. You, If you like any of these activities, you could certainly do any of these rather than the ones that I'm showing you. Also on page 132 to 136, um, there's a whole section on printmaking, making prints. So there's different variations of printmaking. So, um, you know, look at those, and if you think some of those activities look like more fun for you than the ones I'm showing you, you can choose from that. Um, okay, for, um, for students in my Art 119 and Processes and Structures, um, there's another technique. You will each get what's called a jelly plate. Yours will be a little smaller than this one. It has a super cool texture to it. It's like jello. Um, and it's a really interesting surface to create prints on. I'm going to show you one example, but as always, on the handout, there is a link to the Jelly Arts YouTube channel. If you are up late at night and you're looking for something to scroll around on and you have read everything on Twitter, <laughs> go to the Jelly Arts YouTube channel and they have fascinating, really fun experiments um, and different ways to use this jelly plate. I'm just going to show you one example, right? Actually, maybe two. And just to get you started. So first what you'll do 
Um, and I'll show you a couple of examples. So here's a couple of examples of prints that can be made using the jelly plate. Um, this first one here, this one was made um, by, by first, again, grabbing, grabbing some scrap paper. You can tear or cut um, different shapes. I always like tearing better than cutting. I think the edges are more interesting. Um, if you are super crafty and you can make your own stencils, or if you have stencils, you can use stencils on here. But I'm just doing kind of random shapes here. Then, again, using my acrylic paints, um, again, like I mentioned earlier, really try to use it sparingly um, because we want to make sure that you're not um, you're not going to waste uh, the paint later when you're cleaning up. So I put some on my plate, and then again with the brayer, I'll show you what I'm doing here. You should all, in the students in processes and structures, you should get one of these rollers or a roller like this in your art kit. Okay, so now imagine you have all kinds of interesting shapes and things on your surface here. Um, then you take your paint and you just apply it right over gently because you don't want those pieces to move around like that just happened. <laughs> just, we'll just pretend that didn't happen and keep going. Uh-oh, that one came up too. I'm not demoing so well today. When you go over those pieces, you know, again, be kind of gentle, especially because acrylic paint is a little sticky, you'll notice. Okay. Then I peel off my stencils super carefully. And you can um, you can also grab you know again we used forks and and um, or I mentioned forks and q-tips you know you can make some interesting shapes in there let me hold that up so you can see right the shapes that were made you can use um, your q-tips again and you know maybe pull out some make little circles and then I'm gonna grab a sheet of paper I prefer a thin sheet don't use like cardstock use a thinner sheet whoops didn't really line that up so well but and then I'm burnishing again and then peeling it up and you can see the print I think that's super cool now I could let this dry and then clean the jelly plate and print on this same sheet of paper again or I could go in and use colored pencils and color in these negative shapes. Um, so again, that's one super simple method of creating a print using a jelly plate. The other thing that you could do, um, again, I just put some more paint on the jelly plate.
and then use it as a surface again if you just want to create interesting lines with the fork um, what else do I have here also the comb is super cool I don't know if this will work but we'll try it potato masher you know ask your parents if you're at home ask them first before you actually do this And then let me grab another sheet. You know, you could even put one color on one side, another color on the other. You could mix colors, which in other videos, I've encouraged you to, to mix colors rather than using the color right from the container. really interesting they look like egos who's gonna watch the next season of stranger things comment below actually I don't think you can comment on but you can see they look like egos right okay um, and then finally my students in art 119 and processes and structures check out in our textbook page 54 to 63 there are lots of different painting techniques that you can do with watercolor um, with oil and acrylic although we don't use oil in this class um, but certainly acrylic different ways of using like a palette knife you could certainly use other tools that you have at home to apply paint um, lots of different techniques if you have like um, a dropper like this um, so I'm just giving you kind of places to start here's a brush splatter um, so check out these variations and if there's something in here that you would rather do rather than one of the examples I showed you that's totally fine okay don't forget to download that handout that's on canvas related to these painting and printmaking techniques. Have fun.